Hello again, uh, here we are to continue talking about JavaScript. Um, in the last video, we set up our, um, our show items function and it, it prints some list items into the DOM up here and displays them in the browser, right? So that's really great and uh, it makes for a nice you know, way to show our work and we don't have to use the console anymore. <clears throat> But what I'd like to see is I'd like to see the total cost of the item following the, you know, the price and the quantity, right? So you might have tried this on your own and, and, and good for you, um, whether, whether you got the answer or not. Uh, let's do it together right now. So uh, what I'm going to do, and this, this line of code right here is getting like really long. So um, sometimes, you know, uh, just writing code that looks fancy isn't as good as writing code that's easy to read. So um, it doesn't have to look fancy or use nifty tricks with code. All we got to do is make code that's like really legible and easy for us to follow. <clears throat> and that's that's best work we can do. Okay, so what can we do here to make this easier to read? Because really what I want to do here is I want to say equals and then I want to use the dollar sign and I want to say um, cart bracket I dot quantity times doll oh wait I don't need that I need that cart bracket I dot price right wow so that's kind of a long line so what can we do here well these template strings if you're using the back tick it doesn't work with the single quote or the double quote but with the back tick you can have a line return so it's okay for me to actually break these things up into multiple lines, right? So that can be helpful. Another thing that we can do, and actually we can test this out. So if I've got this here, I've got, you know, cart name, uh, price, quantity, equals. Now the equals goes outside here. So anything that's outside of these dollar sign curly braces like this and this, right? And the equal sign that's just printed literally so it's just you know this puts the equal sign into the string right anything that's within the curly braces right so dollar sign with the curly braces everything inside the curly braces is run as code and so this is what we, we call it an expression and the, the when anytime, anytime we have an expression the computer evaluates that expression so here you know I've got two values that I'm getting to and um, I'm going to use this operator to multiply them. So the computer calculates the answer here, right? And, and prints that, okay? So, so this is looking okay. I could even put this on the next line there and maybe that reads a little better. Um, but what, you know what we could also do is we could make some variables. So I'm going to make a variable for the name. So I could say name equals cart bracket i dot name and then I could say const you know uh, uh, price equals cart bracket I dot uh, price and then I could say uh, const uh, oh we got to get the quantity so I get quantity equals you know cart bracket I dot uh, quantity right and when I've done this I've created some we'll call them like intermediate variables so this is just kind of a step I'm grabbing the value here and I'm just gonna store it in this name and this name is a little shorter to type than all of the stuff here right there's no special characters I don't have to get all this stuff right I can just say name so that means down here I can shorten that to name I can shorten this one to price I can shorten this to quantity and then over here, when I do the math, I can just say quantity and uh, price, okay? So that's like a lot easier to read now. And actually, I could put this back on one line and it would probably be shorter, right? Um, let's give that a try. Let's see what that reads like, right? So, uh, so that's not too bad. It's still pretty long, but maybe this will be okay, right? So there we go. That's not too bad, right? name price quantity quantity times price so that reads pretty good hey let's do another shortcut okay and this one might be a little weird okay so and and it's going to be in place of these things so i'm going to leave those there for now so we can compare the two but another thing that we can do is now remember 
when we say cart um, bracket I, we're going to get one of the items in our cart, and it should look like this, right? It should be an object with the curly braces, okay? And it's important that's a, that we know that because that's part of why this, this next step works, right? So let me put a comment in here. So let's say our the name of this item is, you know, um, it's it's an apple and the price of the item is um, 99 cents and the quantity is three, okay? Let me uh, do this, let me put some spaces in there. There we go, right? So let's say we started with this. I'm gonna put a comment here, right? Okay, um, if we use this syntax, we can break apart an object that looks like this into three variables, name, price, and quantity, right? So name, price, quantity. Um, and we can do it this way. We can say cart bracket i. So if cart bracket i is an object that looks like this or an object with a key of name, price, and quantity, then this syntax where we put the curly brackets around some names, as long as these names match the names up here, then it will take the values at those keys and assign them to these variables, okay? Let's comment that out and just test it all and see that it works, right? So this first one should work, right? So let's try that. Okay, and I'll refresh it. Oh yeah, and I, I see my new total here, right? So I got those from these three variables here, but that took three lines of code and it's a little hard to read because we, we had to write, you know, cart bracket i dot name price, right? So, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to make a mistake in here. Let's get rid of this, right? Or you could comment that out if you want, but I'm gonna get rid of it. And what I want to do is I just want to use this line right here, okay? So if cart bracket i is an object like this, I can break it down into its three intermediate variables, right? As long as these variables match the names of the keys within the object, okay? So now in one line of code, I can do the same thing, and we can test this and see if it works here. Um, oops, I, let me resize the window a little bit here and then I'll refresh it and you can see it, it does the same thing, right? So that's pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna save this, right? And uh, let's find some other opportunity to use it, right? So where else could we use this same concept here, right? Are there other locations in here where we could do that, right? Um, you Let me leave that up for you to kind of spot like opportunities to use that. There isn't a lot in here, but but later on as you're working, you'll you'll find other opportunities to use this, okay? So anyway, so there's um, there's our, our total. Oh, let's do one other thing. So let's solve the quantity and the total down here, okay? So we'll need to have two DOM elements. So what we want to do is we want to display the quantity of the cart, well, that'll go right above the list, and then we want to display the total below the list, okay? So up here, I've I put a comment in, but let's put a, um, maybe this should go in a div, right? And we'll give it an ID name of um, cart quantity, and then I'll say, you know, uh, cart quantity here just to remind me that I'm going to put some dynamic content there okay and then uh, maybe I'll go down here and I'll set that up right oh wait I, I need to have a reference to that element so let's get that right so I'll put it here and I'll say uh, cart uh, quantity equals document dot get element by ID um, cart dash quantity so I've got my element here and then now that we've got this we can refer to it over here so I'll say uh, cart quantity dot inner HTML equals and I'm just gonna borrow this whole string right here and paste it there 
and then I can get rid of this console log. Okay, and uh, let's give it a try. So, oh, you have five items in your cart, right? So there's two, four, five. So that's pretty good. Let's do the same thing with um, the total, okay? You can try that one on your own right now if you want. Um, I'll, I'll show you the answer now, or this is how I might do it. I'll put a div here, and I'll give it an ID, and I'll say cart. I'll give it the ID of cart total. And again, I'll put a comment in here to remind me that I'm using some dynamic content there. And again, these things should be above the script tag. And then next, now that we've got an ID here, um, we'll make a variable for it. Right. And I'll do get element by ID. And we'll get the cart total there. So I'll use the ID name that I named here. Right, should be the same name. So now I've got a variable holding the, a reference to this div. And then down in um, show items, right here where we had our console log, I'll say cart total dot inner HTML equals. And, um, and then I'll just borrow the same string. So total in cart, and then it'll have the get, we'll call get total and we'll get the value, right? And I can comment this line out right here. Okay, great. So I've got five, four, fifty-eight in my cart, five items, and uh, there you go. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll add more of this, right? We'll we'll build a, a form here that lets us add items to the cart next. Okay. So uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this is useful to me. Let me know if you have any questions.